The Minnesota Iceman was a man-like creature frozen in a block of ice. Dum, 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 it dum, was dum, displayed at shopping malls, state fairs, and carnivals in the United States and Canada in the 1960s and early 1970s and promoted as a legendary missing link. And we see here the magazine. 60 cents, the May edition of the Aragose, found in Wisconsin, a living fossil in this, the, is this, the missing link between man and the apes. Anthropologists photograph of a head fr 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 frozen in ice. Scientific artists rendition of the probable f features of the frozen head in ice. And the description. It has been described as a male human-like six feet tall, hairy with large hands and feet. Very dark brown hair, about three or four inches long, and a flattened nose. One of its arms appeared to be broken, and one of its eyes appeared to have been knocked out of its socket, allegedly by a bullet that was supposed to have entered the animal's head from behind. Explanations some cryptozoologists have suggested the Minnesota Iceman was a Neanderthal Bigfoot Yeti, or even a frozen prehistoric human. Hoax. Mainstream scientists sadly say that it is... It was all that it was most likely. A hoax. Most likely. Come on now. Is that real science? Most Mainstream. likely. Mainstream. More like lame stream. That was, um, that was, yeah. 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 Got it. Uh, I like science. I love science. Yeah, me okay. too. I love science too, just not when it talks about cryptids. All right. Maybe one day science will prove cryptids, all of them to be. Uh, moving on. I feel like we're lagging and that's... No, we're back. If we were lagging, I apologize. Apologize. Frank. Promoter and exhibitor Frank Hansen claimed the Minnesota Iceman was discovered in the region of Siberia and that he was acting as its caretaker for an absentee owner he described as an eccentric California millionaire. Ooh. Touring carnivals and fairs with the exhibit, Hansen was once reportedly detained by Canadian customs officials who were concerned he was transporting a cadaver. A mysterious California millionaire. I mean, that sounds like such an old school story, like some mysterious California millionaire out there, California ways, with so much money that he bought himself an ice man. Like, what kind of stuff did rich Californian men own back? What kind of stuff do rich California men own <laughs> no, now? No, that's they own time. <laughs> the future and the past and they're just traveling and setting it up so they're always here in this state. That's what's happening now. Oh, it's horrifying. The Sasquatch. That almost made it to the Smithsonian. Oh, that's a familiar story. Come on. And in Indiana, we all know what's going on. End of everything. Oh, box. hey, there's a bunch End of, of the gold vault. in the Grand Canyon. Never Smithsonian reports. Not anymore. What happened, Smithsonian? The Sasquatch. That almost. While searching for evidence of Bigfoot in 1968, cryptozoologists... Ivan Sanderson and Bernard Hevelsman reportedly examined the Iceman in Hansen's house trailer in Minnesota and concluded it was a genuine creature, saying they found... I don't know how to say that quite, that word it, confidently. I, um, putrefication. Putrefication. Where some of the flesh had been exposed from the melted ice. In 1969... Huvelmans wrote an article in the Belgian scientific journal about the Iceman, suggesting that it was a new species with Neanderthal affinities called Homo poingoids. Goids? Pongoides. Homo pongoides. That's a lot more fun. I think it's Homo pongoides. Homo pongoides. And theorized it was shot and killed in Vietnam during the Vietnam uh, War. Oh. 
Who knew he served in Vietnam? <laughs> Prompted by Huvelman's naming the Iceman Homo Pongoids. Pong if you're waiting for me to do the vanilla ice thing, you need to give me a pause. You can't just keep talking over me. I figure if I hit it and you're like James Brown, you're on it, we'll do it. And if not, I'm out. And moving on. Doom, 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 doom. Promoted by Hoovelman's naming, the Iceman, Pongoides. The FBI was informed that the subject might potentially be a human murder victim, but the agency did not investigate. Of course they didn't. Sanderson, then science editor for Aragossi magazine, definitely not how it's spelled, but we're going to go with it, authored an article about the Iceman. In the April and 1969 issue that featured the headline, Is this the missing link between man and the apes? Sanderson also spoke about the Ice Man. It should be faster. Can you not predict when I'm, I'm just saying, listening to what you're you saying? You should think about the ice as your cue. In the missing link between man, we did that one. Asking him to investigate it under the... No, we didn't do that one. Sanderson <laughs> also spoke about the... Don't do it this time. Iceman in television appearances and contacted primatologist John Napier. Dum, 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 dum. John does not deserve that. It was a different key. Save it. Asking him to investigate it under the official auspicious of Smithsonian institution a little over on the s's there anson subsequently withdrew the minnesota ice man dum, 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 dig -a -dum, dum. should be faster from public <laughs> inspection saying the withdrawal was in was on orders from its california-based owner napier in conjunction with the smithsonian made preliminary investigations of hansen's affairs finding that hansen had commissioned the creation of the ice man from a west coast company in 1967 leading to napier to conclude that he was only ever one ice man latex that there was only ever fake one. news nope we don't want to hear it we're done fake news. we shouldn't Get have gone that here. far we should have stayed Get back out of up here. we won too many ice man stories stay out so there it was the ice man cometh okay we did it we did it it's done i mean we could talk about the news about how like mike said stuff like hey uh the um i'm gonna read what he said unless you know it off the top of your head well i know he said that the spell books are for casters and we talked about the reason why we think he said that is because spell books tend to have the setup to play it's for people who want to play the game and booster boxes are more for collectors. You know, people are pulling a lot of full hollows out. The booster boxes seem to be loaded with these full hollow obnoxious nine treasure, whereas the spell books seem to be loaded with reverse hollow playable cards, you know, the sleeves, the coin, the unique cryptid nation promo. They're cool, but they're more for people who want to play the game. Whereas the booster boxes seem to be more for collectors, but that's just our interpretation of what you said. Who knows what Mike meant? He's a he's a mysterious man, that Mike. He's a mad genius, that Mike. The Council of Mikes. Yeah. We so know. which Mike do we mean by that Mike? But we're dealing with more of than one. That's yeah, yeah, multi-dimensional. Yeah, no one point. person can do all this. I mean, so it is the metaverse. We're on to you, Mike, and we get what you're doing with the red ink. Oh, I understand. I mean, you know, this is going to be fake news, but uh, you're golden ticket to everybody. So. In 20 years, whoever has those golden tickets, um, well, Gets they're going to the chocolate factory. Yeah. And you're going to give the MetaZoo chocolate factory that you're going to make because you're going to have theme parks and definitely chocolate factories like Hershey Park. You're going to have a MetaZoo, you know, chocolate fa way better than Hershey. I mean, Hershey's wonderful. I work for Hershey. We won't get into that tonight. Another time. I mean, but I'll tell you right now, I want a Milky Metabar. Oh, really wow. want a Milky Metabar, guys. Oh, man. I can almost. Mm. Yeah, Mike. So, uh, Council of Mikes, you know, I'm sure you can handle that. And, uh, I think that's about it. I had a point, but I forgot it. But there's so many points to be made. We'll just save it for another time. You know, I think that was a much deeper wisdom. There are so many points to be made, guys. Why not save them for another time? Thanks for listening, guys. See you next time.